City of Marine City Commission meeting to order Marine City Fire Hall uh, Thursday, February 7th, 2019, 7 p.m. Could you please uh, stand for a Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And could we have a brief moment of silence for our dearly departed? Roll call, please. Mayor Van Bosch. Here. Commissioner Bryson. Here. Commissioner Hendricks. Here. Commissioner Cullinan. Here. Commissioner Clausen. Here. Commissioner Murphy. Here. Commissioner Burkhamp. Here. All right, moving on to communications. I need a motion to receive and file communications. So move. Support. Questions or concerns on communications? Hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. <coughs> moving on to public comment. Anyone in attendance is welcome to address the city commission. Please state your name and address. Please limit your comments to five minutes. This time, this is the time for you to raise issues. The commission will not respond, but will forward your issues to the necessary places. So anyone else like to, Mr. Moran? Ten Pleasant Street in Marine City. I can. I noticed that you have a discussion tonight on recreational marijuana, and I wanted to bring up some bullet points. Uh, neither pro nor con, um, but uh, some points for discussion that I think merit. Uh, your attention. I'm passing around a cartoon that I came across in a weekly news magazine, and for the uh, audience, it is a picture of a W.C. Fields uh, type character standing on an old fashioned medicine wagon uh, that uh, says marijuana legalization and snake oil underneath it. And he's holding up a small bottle of pot that says guaranteed to raise revenue and lower crime without increasing drug use, impaired drivers, or fatal crashes. So you may take that as a, for what it's worth. Um, we had a vote in November that legalized private use of marijuana. Lest we understand that as a mandate we need to recognize that even though 60% of the voters approved that proposal, only 31% uh, of the registered voters fall into that group. So we have less than one out of three, fewer than one out of three people, registered voters in Marine City who supported the legalization. That, um, proposition said nothing about a mandate to having uh, sales within Marine City. That's entirely up for grabs. That was not part of the, part of the, uh, uh, the mandate from that proposal. Is there an opportunity, an opportunity to increase revenue for the city of Detroit? That's kind of an unknown yet at this point as to, as to how much the city might gain for participating in marijuana sales, growth, or uh, preparation. But that has to be weighed against the cost of uh, policing those activities for one thing. So that needs to be uh, part of our debate uh, is not only what do we bring in, but what is it going to cost us to regulate that activity? Does the legislation uh, allow us to choose only 
to grow or process, or do we have to open ourselves up to all of that activity? We have very little land available uh, in the city uh, limits uh, that I think would make uh, growth a profitable enterprise, but we certainly have industrial properties that might make processing profitable. So that's something to look at. Um, <clears throat> we have people that use marijuana medically and use it for pleasure. They have the right to do so. They will continue to do so whether they can buy it in Marine City or not. Uh, they're entitled to grow their own, is my understanding, to a limited extent. And they can buy it elsewhere, wherever they're buying it now. So there's no pressure on the city uh, to, to accommodate those people who are already being accommodated in other ways. When you listen to, myself included, people uh, that, that are pro or con, you need, to, you need to look at their motivation. Why are they one side or the other? Uh, the people that are pro are very often interested in their profit, not so much the city's profit or welfare. People that are against it uh, are, are against it maybe largely out of fear of the unknown. They don't know what that's going to, to do in terms of their, their quality of life here in the city. And, uh, you know, it's going to be difficult to do, deal with those fears. The law enforcement experts that have been uh, up here talking about it, uh, they're experts in their field. And we need to seriously consider uh, their, their point of view. Okay. Um, you mentioned the right for people to do business. That right is not absolute. Uh, we would legislate a porn shop or, you know, a dance hall or something like that. So, um, at any rate, those are, those are some things to think about. Uh, I don't know that we're ready to make a decision yet, but it's, it's certainly an issue that's uh, worthy of further debate. I have one more thing to add. This is from the U.S. Coast Guard. Uh, for those of you coming this spring that think that you're going to take this new law and smoke where you will, Federal jurisdiction um, still covers the waterways. So you cannot be on a boat, use a boat, or be on a dock and, and smoking marijuana. So just keep that in your pipe and smoke it. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else like to speak? Good evening, Erica DeLang, Marine City Area Chamber. Um, and with me is our Vice President of our Board, Laura Scotcha, and our Treasurer, Curtis McBride. And on behalf of the Chamber, we would like to congratulate the City of Marine City for being our member spotlight this month for February. So we would like to ask our Mayor and City Commissioners and employees to please come forward so we can take a picture and present you with this beautiful banner. <laughs> And this beautiful plaque. You <laughs> might <laughs> It's got a, it's on wheels. <laughs> Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 Paul was pushing. 
Make sure I was pinching him. But <laughs> he wasn't moving. Now you're just going to scoot out of here, aren't you? <laughs> Erica, are you just going to leave us now? Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. Curtis. Mm-hmm. Curtis. Mm-hmm. Curtis. Mm-hmm. Anyone else like to speak in public comment? Uh, moving on to approval of the agenda. Uh, make a motion that we uh, approve our agenda as presented. Second. Motion, second. Any questions, corrections on the agenda? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Moving on to approval of the City Commission regular meeting January 17th. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Support. Corrections or deletions on the minutes. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, we've got a business license for Ella's Country Oven and a charitable gaming license for Historical Society. Can I get a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve. Support. Motion, support. Any questions or concerns on it? Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Bryson? Yes. Commissioner Hedrick? Yes. Commissioner Callahan? Yes. Commissioner Claussen? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner Yes. Yes. Moving on to uh, unfinished business, and we'll start with the Mosaic Project. <coughs> Mr. Davis. Yes, uh, working with uh, a representative from the Historical Society, I redrafted the installation and maintenance agreement to meet the concerns raised by the commission at the last meeting and did uh, in inject a few additional uh, positions that I believe are beneficial to both parties. We have a, a good description of maintenance, a good description of removal. I have run this by the representatives of the Historical Society, um, and it has been approved from their end. And um, I would recommend we get this agreement in place. Um, it, it projects the possibility of eight mosaics and governs our relationship to those if and when they're installed. Um, knowing that they're not even, they're not installed yet, but it would be good to have this in place before they're installed. Can I get a motion or of some type right now, just so we can discuss it? I'll make a motion to approve the installation and maintenance agreement for the mosaic project as presented. Support. Mm -hmm. Motion support. Any questions for the city attorney on? So currently all we're going to do is approve this. We haven't really approved the project. That's correct. If you, if you look at the whereas um, mm -hmm. clauses, the, mm -hmm. it begins with the, the history that they've commissioned up to, up to eight mosaics, right? And that um, they are going to, uh, um, if you go to the fourth whereas, um, the exact and final locations of the mosaic settings may vary and that there will eventually be an exhibit that will say where they are. I know you're still in the process of doing that with the Historical Society, but I believe the Historical Society also wants to have some assurance that there'll be a, a maintenance agreement in place as well. So if, if it never comes to be, then you will have nothing to install and maintain. But uh, right now, I think we're just looking at the agreement. Okay. Anyone else have any questions or concerns <coughs> on it? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Hendricks? Yes. Commissioner Callahan? Yes. Commissioner Clausen? Yes. Commissioner Marshall? Yes. Commissioner Burkhamen? Yes. Mayor Vandenbosch? Yes. Commissioner Bryson? Yes. Motion carried. All right, moving on to the second reading and adoption of ordinance. 2019-001, General City Ordinance, Merchandise and Materials on Sidewalks, Traffic and Motor Vehicles, Parking and Storage of Commercial Vehicles, Health and Sanitation, Nuisance, 
grass cutting, building regulations, and construction. Can I get a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 2019-001. Support. Motion to support. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Merchant. Yes. Commissioner Buchanan. Yes. Mayor Vandebach. Yes. Commissioner Bryson. Yes. Commissioner Hendrick. Yes. Motion carries. Moving on to <clears throat> second reading of ordinance number 2019-002, zoning ordinance, miscellaneous changes, including map amendment. I'll make a motion we approve ordinance number 2019-002. Support. support. Oh, sorry. Motion to support. Any questions or concerns on this one? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Merchant. Yes. Commissioner Burkhamen. Yes. Mayor Vandebosch. Yes. Commissioner Bryson. Yes. Commissioner Hendrick. Yes. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Motion carries. All right, moving on to <coughs> body cameras. <coughs> Good evening. So there's a, this is such a long, complex process that we've been through. Um, I know the last time I was here, we briefly spoke about it. I guess I should back up and so currently we have three in-car cameras that are run by L3. The county wrote a grant to purchase L3 body cameras. We got the body cameras. They sat, collected dust. We were promised to get the new ones. New ones were pushed out, caught on fire, etc. So we turned those, got refunded our, our money um, to be used towards the purchase of new body cameras. <coughs> so over the last month in January, we met with three separate companies, GTAC, WatchGuard, and ProVision. Um, we're, we were able to see the new technology that's out there, how each of them worked, the, the product themselves. Um, and GTAC was by far, in, in, in my opinion, I know a couple other agencies are going to GTAC, but whether or not they get approval to do it um, is, remains to be seen. So what I'm asking for is, is the waiver uh, for the competitive 4G TAC, but with that, you have to understand that there's going to come a legacy cost with the storage. Um, at, at currently, how GTAC quoted it out was for 15 G's, 15 gigs of storage per body cam is $15. It's the deal that he could get us. The other companies weren't remotely even close to that, um, but that's a guarantee that can only last for so long. I don't know at what point that number could double, et cetera. So initially right now, if I get the six body cameras and the three in-car cameras, we have to pay for nine types of storage, which is up in the cloud. The system's phenomenal, a click of a button and we can share a video to our prosecutor. It's, it's, it's really unique how this system works. So, if you add all that up, it's right now it's 1,000, I believe $1,620. That's gonna be reoccurring for so many years, depending if within three years they say, hey, by the way, that $15 a month is now gonna be 30. I, there's no guarantees with that. So what I am asking for is, is the waiver, if you guys will allow you know, that reoccurring legacy cost. And if that's gonna be put in the budget. Um, <coughs> So currently, I, I guess some of that's gonna get eaten up because what we currently pay on our budget with L3 for the back office support and software agreement maintenance is about 1800. That number can go away and we'll eat kind of the 1620. So we'll be kind of saving about 180 bucks initially. But again, I have no guarantees if that number is ever gonna double or go up in the future. I have none. So I'm asking for the waiver for the, for the GTAC camera for now. All right, now we're doing car. Well, you, you've kept them together. I, and, I, and I've packing. kept them together. I, I did budget, so this, this budget year, I budgeted some salvage vehicle funds to fund the purchase of the in-car cameras, which was about 
19,000 or something. So there is money already set aside for that. And then the remainder of what that was is there's some donation money is going to be used. And then the $3,000 for the grant will be used to purchase the body cameras. It's all, it's already funded. It's already in the budget for that. Now, have you got any policies written yet for the, not yet. We're, I, I was waiting to find out which camera we're going to go with because the procedure portion of it can't be written until I know which camera we're using. Do they assist you in writing? No, we're going to, we're going to try to get together as, as agencies and do a, a countywide policy. So we're all on the same page with redaction and storage and all that stuff. And how long is the, how long do we have to store this data? It depends on the nature. If it's a simple traffic stop with a verbal warning, mm -hmm. 60 days. And then they can go away. Felony cases got to be kept for at least 10 years. 10 years. But if that's the case, we can download it to a disk and just put it in a case file. So it doesn't need to be kept forever on, this, on the cloud side of things. Okay. It's, it's, it's a complicated very. process, but um, I think it's very beneficial. But again, <clears throat> my concern is in three to five years, they're not going to come and say, it's, we're doubling your cost, but for storage. Um, I guess I would have liked to have seen a sheet where you had all the figures for each one because, I mean, even if I look at this, I'm going from one here that's, I guess it's what, this provision, you've got um, 3912, is that just, that's for all three? And then you've got 1,770 for six body cams. Is that still in provision? Yeah, there's two sheets in there. Then if I jump to GTAC, I'm looking at 25 grand, and if I jump to the next one, it's 42,000. So I'm trying to find the. <laughs> provision, the, the quote that you have, I believe, yeah. provision did not quote for the in car cameras. This first sheet is the in car. It says in car video base kit. One of two, the first. Oh, for the 3912? And then yeah. the next two pages, or one page, is for the body camera. Quantity six, 295 a unit, 1770. So that's, that, that's th the one we're not buying. That's the one we're not buying. So if you, if you look at GTAC, the GTAC quote, I think, came out to about $285 per body camera. <clears throat> So that's the ITS is your provider? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff there, too. He, well, that's all included, yeah. His, his, he was way more detailed than his quote. Pro, what I didn't like about ProVision is their body camera actually had an LED screen on the back. And they said that if that cracks in, in some type of a tussle, that there's, it's not warrantied. Well, I know. I'm just going from 1770 to... But so, so the provision quote, if you look at their storage cost, it's $55 per unit per month, which is astronomical cost for a small agency. Well, and then on the GTAC, it says installation not included, and neither is handling and any other fee. So how do we know that's the total cost? Well, in, installation will be all separate through that Synergy company that I currently use for upfitting in the vehicle. So the total for the GTAC is 25049 0.57, Let me find it. The GTAC total quote is $25,049, yes. Okay. I, I'm just looking for the differences between these. I mean, and then the watch guard, that's $42,000. But, so, so the bottom line is ProVision probably will be cheaper but we'll be paying more in storage fees. If you do the $55 per unit times that by nine times that by 12, you're getting what, six, $7,000 in change of 16, 20. For the, are you talking in car or the body cams? It's, it's storage for all, all, all nine. Cause it says here 15 per month per device. That's for, that's for. In car. In car. Okay. That's for everything for G tech. Is that what you're referencing? No, I'm looking at your provision. It says right down here at the bottom. That's a whole I, I that's guess, a whole separate program. I guess I that, would have liked a better breakdown on one sheet that showed me the figures 
the, the total cost to store. You see what I'm saying? Instead of, I mean, this is. Compare all three fours. Yeah, it would have been a lot, um, little easier to. <laughs> Chief, so 25,000 uh, for uh, GTEC. Is that the one I'm looking at here? You're saying that you have that money set aside already? I do, yes. And that it will be primarily pulled out of the salvage vehicle funds, which is a separate line item in my budget. After the, how long is the term at the $15 rate? The you get the 15 gigs, $15 per cam. He couldn't guarantee anything to me on the phone. So even at, even at a first year, it could go up, is what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I read an article in the Washington <clears throat> Post that a lot of smaller agencies are actually going away from body cameras because of storage costs. Hmm. So if you upload it to the cloud, are you and you switch companies at some point because of the price, are you able to are you able to recapture that information or is that theirs and they keep it? Theirs and they keep it. So you have no access to it anymore? None. Because I'm not paying that fee anymore. Right. Unless we download it and put it in the file. And that's they'll let you do that? Yes. As, as long as we're paying the them, well, yes. Yeah, so as long as we're paying the fee, we have access to the right. videos which we're able to download. So if and we had, if we had a complicated case, we would discuss it and we would download it and keep it with the file mm -hmm. separately, mm -hmm. so that we would never lose it. Jim, at this time, do you think it's should we move forward with the body cams with a lot of the information? I've read the same thing that you're stating. Bare minimum, I need in-car cameras right because that, those that, what I those what I are, currently have those yeah. are end of life and need to be upgraded right. yep. we've had those Absolutely. for eight to ten I don't years. think anybody's no. arguing that the, the, the body the body cameras I'm 50 50 on I mean it has there really come a time in this department where we could use them I can think of one yes but we still had in-car camera to capture that if that incident would have been off screen I mean, it, we, I had an officer, you know, involved shooting mm -hmm. who was cleared in 13 days because we had in-car video. Right. I, I believe body cameras are beneficial. I'm just leery on these costs. Well, let me ask you this. Is if, say, tonight we did the in-car units, do you have time for us to still make a decision on the others? I, absolutely. Yep. But, but just keep in mind, though, if, if, if I go forward with GTAC and get the in-car cameras, we're still going to be paying the $15 for the three units. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 I'm good. I'm good <clears throat> with that. You want to take your time on that decision? I'm, I'm absolutely fine with because, and I think, you know, help you get some, uh, your paperwork at hat, you know, Ray, if you, if we buy a G tech here mm -hmm. more than likely, you know, for doing policy and procedure for body cams, you could probably write it off the G tech and I, I, I could, it, so if, if, if I get approval tonight just to buy the in-car cameras, mm -hmm. I can't go to another body, a body right. camera. Absolutely. I want the two to marry each other. Yeah. Right. One, that, one that, system. That I want to put bring yeah. that out to light. If, if, if I get the GTAC tonight, I will, I will start writing the body camera policy just in case there's an approval in the future. But like there's been so many that have opted out or <clears throat> starting to opt out of body cams. And, and, and for instance, I, I talked to a, a, another local chief, and I don't want to say the department, but um, he said he's talked to most of his commissioners, and he doesn't think he's going to get approval for the body cameras because of his storage costs. And his are going to be nine or ten times m more than what mine are going to be. So he's, he's worried that he's not going to be able to get them. I think they're beneficial. I, I just don't, I don't like that cost. I don't like that. We don't have a guarantee. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I, so I've also talked to this, this rep from GTAC, and I said, well, what if we get a server and just house it at the department where the current one's at, you know, the L3 one? And he goes, sure, not a problem, but that's ten to $12,000. So what, where do we go from there? Do we house and it how here? how before it maxes out that server? Correct. Well, we can, you know, we can set the retention cycle. So if it's a simple traffic stop at 60 days, that video, bye-bye, gone. So it's not holding up. It's, it's currently how it's set up now, that at a certain time frame, videos are disappearing. Do you have to flag the videos, though? Yes. I download them almost right away. And then so we've got the ability to mark them in the patrol car, you know, whether it's a verbal warning, civil, you know, a, a mm -hmm. ticket or, or other. If it's marked other, it's, it's kept for, I think, 180 days. So we've got the ability to go back and, 
and get it. But that's a, it's a second option if we want to, but I don't have the money currently for attended $12,000 server. Any other thoughts from the commission? I'm, I'm just so you know, I'm going to have to make some phone calls on Monday to find out because Nikki Falk runs the, runs this grant right. and she said this money needs to be spent well, quickly. True. But I mean, they've been dragging their feet for how long? Well, we just got the refund from it. <laughs> so, but, but it's our, and on her books, that money's already been spent, but it's been refunded. And she's like, we, we, that money needs to get spent. So I'm like, well, what if we don't get approval for it, Nikki? Will in car qualify for? No, because just, the grant was specific body. for body cameras. Yep. Well, that's three thousand, right? The three thousand change, yeah. Thirty-two hundred. But we could. <clears throat> rush we could wait a month. And... Yeah, we can wait a month. I would probably say month at tops. I would like to see a motion to at least tonight do the in car cameras and hold off on the. Um, <clears throat> body cams for now until we can get some more and see what some of the other communities are doing too. Maybe lean on them a little bit and see. So basically what you need is you need a motion to waive the competitive bid process for the purchase of three G-Tech in-car cameras. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, Lisa. Um, quick thing. Can you explain, since we have a new board, about yes. So uh, waiving? When you hear the term waiving, the competitive uh, bid process is a uh, a system in place that requires a unanimous vote. Um, as uh, the city commission, we, we do operate under a bid process, and we <coughs> do um, normally require that a bid process be presented. When we have unique items for purchase, return items, or s second uses from same companies, or there's only one provider of a product uh, unique to, to a need of the, of the city, we waive the competitive bid process um, by a separate vote, by a separate motion. So this evening, although there has been discussion of three bids, um, <coughs> the chief is asking that we waive the competitive bid processing for the car camera portion of this, uh, of this request. That has to be a separate motion, separate vote, and you have to pass that unanimously in order to go to the second motion, which would be the actual motion on the purchase. Okay, so can we get a motion to waive the competitive bids on just the in-car campus? Sure. Uh, I make a motion that we waive the competitive competitive bid process for the purchase of three G Tech in-car cameras. Support. Motion support. Roll call vote, please. Uh, Commissioner Merchant. Yes. Commissioner Verkamen. Yes. Mayor Vanabaj. Yes. Commissioner Bryson. Yes. Commissioner Hendrick? Yes. Commissioner Callahan? Yes. Commissioner Clausen? Yes. Motion carries. Oh, one more. Can you explain what happens if one of us would have voted against it? It would have failed. Well, mm -hmm. we would have had, he would have had to go out for bids. Correct. Correct. Sealed, sealed bids? Yeah. Yeah. It, right. it would have and, just forced and, him. And by the way, this requirement comes out of your charter. Yeah. Okay. Now we need a motion to approve the purchase. Do we know what the total is without the body cam? I don't have that number. <laughs> no. I just have a total quote with just um, with everything involved. Okay. Just trying to see if it's on here. <coughs> It'd be less sixteen eighty one, right? Mm. It looks like anything that would have a three on it. Well, this is body. Well, there's different items problem so yeah, I believe it was just under 20,000 <clears throat> now the warranty oh. is these is it my letter hmm? is it my letter I drafted did I separate it in my letter no sorry <laughs> yeah <laughs> Make it easier, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just we gotta give that cool figure. Oh, 
How's the warranty on your phone? <laughs> <laughs> she was using it as a calculator for us. So how are we going to handle this? Uh... Mm -hmm. I, I know it won't exceed 20000 I know, but we normally have to give a figure. The, the, the two, the two. Oh, yeah. Oh, the yeah. Warranties. Yeah. Okay, let's add it all up and see what happens. I would cut out this and these. These are all body camera, body camera. Mm-hmm. Looks like it's under about eighteen thousand dollars for the camera stuff, for there the body go. camera stuff. That's the rough, right around eighteen thousand for the body camera stuff. <clears throat> Are you going to need to rewrite anything for cloud storage for your policy procedures for this? A little bit. A little bit? Yeah. Just a few tweaks here and there. Is there a security thing that you've got to worry about with the cloud at all? Or? Nope. No. Nope. Chief, is the total cost for what you're asking for tonight under twenty? Under 20000 you could make a motion to approve it not to exceed 20 and bring back a final cost at the next meeting for ratification. Okay. Can I add that to your motion? Sure. So, the Chief, you would have to bring back the final cost and have it ratified at the next meeting. Will do. Make it under 20. Absolutely. Even if it's not? It will be under 20. Okay. Even if it's not? <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. I came up with okay. 20,423. So if it's under that, my pocketbook, it's only four hundred twenty-three dollars. Uh, I, I do believe at one point, I, I I think I have the quote in my email at the department. I can probably get it for you before the meeting is ended. <coughs> from a, from a previous quote from a couple weeks ago, and I I, I believe it was under twenty thousand. Well, we'll do the so just do the for 20. now. We'll do yeah. it for now. We'll ratify right. the cost, the exact cost at the next meeting. Yep. Okay. Okay, um, I make a motion to um, approve the uh, the purchase of 3G tech and car cameras, not to exceed twenty thousand um, dollars, as long as we get um, the pricing, the exact pricing at our next meeting, and, or, ratif and ratified by another vote. Okay, and ratify it by another vote, and I'll support all those amendments. <laughs> Anybody have any more questions on the in-car cameras from G Tech? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Mr. Burkhamen? Yes. Mayor Vandenbosch? Yes. Commissioner Bryson? Yes. Commissioner Hendricks? Yes. Commissioner Callahan? Yes. Commissioner Clausen? Yes. Commissioner Merchant? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, and sorry for the confusion. <coughs> okay, don't leave yet. Don't do it again. <laughs> don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. You may be asked questions on this. Man. Yeah, you're getting dragged into it, so stay there. <laughs> Next, we're moving on to this memo from Charles Davis on marijuana, recreational marijuana. Commissioners, I, I have presented um, this memo. It was dated January 16, 2019. I've tried to keep uh, the city manager aware of anything else that I've received with respect to uh, this issue. Uh, I, I have faced this issue in several communities and I would start off by saying uh, the same thing. We all come to the issue of marijuana with independent thinking, independent past, independent current thoughts on whether or not marijuana should be legal or illegal. This is really before you with respect to a zoning issue at this juncture. Uh, the state of Michigan has already casted its vote and has presented um, uh, legislation that is not fulfilled yet until December of 2019 when they issue their final regulations. In the meantime, one of two things, in my opinion, has to be happening uh, in this city and in other uh, municipalities. We need to be either directing our planning commission to look at this issue and um, study and develop ordinances if we see fit to address these potential uses or we need to 
pass an ordinance affirmatively that rejects all of the uses in Marine City. Um, let me tell you the, um, um, a little more about that. Um, I've already prepared and, and given you a draft ordinance of how that looks when you go the prohibition route. If you go the prohibition route, you can always repeal that as we learn more and you can then go back to allowing some or all of the activities allowed under the law. If you go the route of allowing some or all the activities under the law, it's very difficult later to prohibit them uh, without um, potential exposure to significant litigation. If you do nothing and you start to get requests for these types of facilities and we don't have an answer that has been uh, the breeding ground for existing litigation as well in, in various communities. Um, so I would ask that the city commission give direction on this um, at some point, i.e. send it to the planning commission to analyze ordinance schemes that would allow one or more of these activities or adopt the prohibition um, and alert the state of Michigan that you are a prohibited community and stop the request before they start for any such uses. Um, there are requirements in this you, you, time, place, and manner are three good words that would describe what you're allowed to do with respect to these uses. There's other things you can regulate signage, you can, you can do a lot of other things. You, you cannot allow one of these facilities in an area that's zoned exclusively residential, and you really should keep these um, facilities a thousand feet from any school um, or learning uh, facility. Um, I don't know where that puts you in Marine City. I have one community, when I started drawing the circles, there were no spaces left um, for these uh, uses. Um, I don't know where it would, um, those radiuses would uh, be drawn uh, in, in Marine City. But I know you, it, it's not a large um, um, community in terms of when you start drawing a thousand feet from every school or, or learning activity uh, center or, and you exclude residential completely, there's, there's not a lot of space left, but there is some. So you really ha you're really at a threshold question at the beginning of this issue is do you want to open a door to these types of activities in your community? If yes, then we should start a process at the Planning Commission to study time, place, and manner, and they could report back to you. If you're not inclined from a legislative policy set to have these facilities in your community, you should allow the passage of the ordinance that prohibits them entirely. I mean, and, and, and it's really at this juncture a matter of zoning. I think the earlier speaker who said we voted to legalize marijuana, yes, for recreational use, that was not a vote to have it in your community. That was a vote to legalize it statewide for recreational uses. There are many, many communities who have taken the prohibition stance with the idea that if in fact later we learn more about what they're gonna issue for regulations and how they're gonna approve people and, and how it's gonna work from, they don't even know yet. And they don't have to have those regs out until December of 2019. Um, so a lot of people are just opting out right now and, and wait and see. So let's say, you know, we, we go with, we're going to pro prohibit, we go that route. And we let down the road here after we start learning more and more, then we decide, we start thinking, you know, maybe we are going to allow. Can we kind of put the cart before the horse and send it, send it to our planning and send it to them and say, hey, look, we're thinking about that we might uh -huh. allow this and then have them start the plan so that we, are, we have those in place and have all their information set, and then we can maybe You can decide. prohibit while you're studying. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, I, there was an article in the in voice <coughs> from uh, 
our county sheriff. And uh, it uh, and most of the units, I work for other units of government, and most of them are opting out for the same reason that we can pick it up later, but we don't know the rules and regulations that are coming out from the state. So how can we make rules to prohibit it? So uh, my thought would be just to go ahead and opt out of it. Chief, I got a question. They haven't truly have a good roadside sobriety <coughs> yet for marijuana. As, as we've got alcohol down to a science with PBTs and data masters and that, but they have not gotten anything for you guys on the road yet. Well, so the county, I believe, has two or three registered. They call them DREs, which is a drug recognition expert. We just did some legal update with the prosecutor, and the prosecutor recommended that any traffic stop involving suspected OUID operating on the influence of a drug to pull in a DRE in to do the roadside testing. So then our one officer, we'd have to call for backup or assistance from the county or the state police, whoever is certified on duty. Correct. Because I, I can't simply afford right. to send one of my officers to an eight DRE. It's like a two week school out yep. in Arizona yeah. or something. It's a rare, it's a, it's a, it, you know, it raises the issue of, you know, and I, I know it's an extreme example, but you know, you pull over a vehicle and you can smell marijuana, but the PBT shows the person is also intoxicated. I mean, the inclination is you just write it up for intoxication and move along, right? Correct. Um, if you smell marijuana and the person's not intoxicated, then you have a question. And now you have the question of if you, if you see an erratic <coughs> driver and you pull and say, have you been smoking marijuana? I smoked it yesterday. What do you do with that? It, There's a, a lot of questions that are unanswered at this point. Correct. It's all about the level of nanograms in somebody's blood, and it, it's very intricate and detailed. And and the, and the real <laughs> test that you would have to, the, the kind of testing you would have to do short of the expert appearing on the site would require a warrant. Certainly. So you'd have to go to the, uh, and to do an intrusive test, uh, blood test or a hair test um, to conclude that it was uh, marijuana. And it, it we don't have all these answers yet. And a blood test is months. Correct. To get. Right. Yes. We've waited up to a year before for a blood we, test to come back just, for, for we drugs. Just, we just finished a case where I think we were a year and a month yeah. because we didn't. I remember calling saying, what, why, why are we waiting so long on this? Because we don't have the results back yet. Yep. But on the other hand, um, <coughs> it's still fairly illegal, even though the state proves it statewide the federal federal government says it's an illegal that is drug. correct so, that law has not changed and uh the i've been to a couple of classes on the one out in colorado and that's what they're concerned about is yes they they've got it going they've got a good business going but yet they've got that on their back that anytime the federal government can come in and shut them down and their violent crime rate is up right their accident involving their or UID involving stats show everything's up way up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Would it be <clears throat> possible if we did a prohibition to put a sunset clause in it for a couple of years out to prohibit for a year to allow the state to figure out what they're going to do plus another year for us to figure out what we're going to do but that it forces us to look at it instead of just prohibit it and it never really kind of comes up again. Well, you can repeal it at any time. Uh, what you're looking for is a trigger. Yes. So it forces <laughs> us to relook at it. Mm -hmm. it. It would um, force you to relook at it once you have more information from. It would, it would be best to uh, approve the um, prohibition ordinance with that in your motion. Um, in other words, directing that this issue be revisited mm -hmm. at a certain time period. I would not want to put that in the ordinance itself. Just as binding on your, mm -hmm. on your motion. Anyone else have any? So what direction are we going to give them? If you want the prohibiting uh, ordinance for consideration. I'm not advocating yes or no, but I could have it to you for your next meeting. 
think we've got a we've got to make a decision one way or the other. Yeah, I, I would urge you to do that. Um, no action is is a current breeding ground for lawsuits. Yes, and I think it's clear that everybody's only opting out until we get more information. Basically. You can come back later. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, if we opt out of recreational, and because some of the I've heard some of the talk about medical, would it be an option to opt in on medical? You already opted out of medical. Right. You you could revisit that. Because if somebody actually needs it for therapy because they've added so many different uh, ailments now that you know it's it's a therapy for and uh, I just wondered it, if it may it, be it is not that. a huge threshold to get a medical marijuana card no I know right just have a headache and, and we already have the mer the, right. the medical marijuana and that's been going already it's mm -hmm. the re the Using it as a recreational use, right? But I was just wondering, is there any issue with going with the medical? You could revisit that in a separate issue. Separate there is issue. there is some consideration. The state is is analyzing whether or not those who were qualified to do medical marijuana are going to be first in line. Any sort of preference on recreational marijuana? They are looking at that issue because they've already been screened and approved. Um, but you could revisit your position on medical. But if we approve someone that, if we approve medical and they are on the list, then they can you're become. Have, you're, you're going to open up a, a, uh, a can Indian, of worms. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> it's either or. So no action is required on this this evening. We just, I'll just bring back that ordinance for your consideration. You're not deciding okay. that tonight, okay. but you can take a look at the framework of an ordinance. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Moving on to new business, and we've got resolution 10-2019, Northeastern Bell and Anchorway Watersheds 2019. Budget. I'll make a motion to approve this resolution. Support. Any questions on it? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Mayor Van Bosch? Yes. Commissioner Bryson? Yes. Commissioner Hendrick? Yes. Commissioner Callahan? Yes. Commissioner Clausen? Yes. Commissioner Murphy? Yes. Commissioner Burkini? Yes. Motion carries. Next, we're moving on to the parks plan. Um, we need a motion to send this to planning. I'll make a motion that we send the park planning to the planning commission to create, um, um, they're going to look at all our parks, but um, I'd also in there like to exempt any city capital improvement projects and put a moratorium on anything but our projects until we get this finished. Hopefully that makes sense. Support. Motion and support. Any questions on it? Yes. I, I guess the only thing, it's not so much questions, but I'm just glad that we're kind of gonna try to do this because this will allow us to start looking at our parks um, seeing what we have in our parks, how many benches, how much green space we're going to keep, what type of things, and, and just start planning for our parks in a better instead of just throwing stuff here and there and everywhere. So I think this is a good way to get going on it and to, to make our parks so that they're all, you know, it all looks good together. Any other questions? Or so I'm going to say this because I think it's probably an elephant in the room right now. So mm -hmm. does this also include a moratorium on the mosaic project? <laughs> I was going to ask that too. Um, well, we haven't approved that yet. <laughs> well, I right. think that's a problem. But I think this will be finished long before that's going to be 
back to us to tell you the truth. I don't think the planning commission is going to take, uh, I, don't, I don't know, how long do you think it would take you, Joe? No idea? It depends on how soon we can get the information together. Yeah. Uh, who's who's going to do the measurements on the counting and so on and so forth. So we'll talk about that next Monday. And it's going to be several weeks. I don't know what the, what the timeline for the mosaic project is. Well, you got, it's going to be into better, a lot better weather, so it's going to be a few months. April, May, now. before mm -hmm. you really can start pouring. Does your moratorium exclude the, the larger parks along the waterfront, or? I'm not sure what, what, what's in the capital improvement program at this point. Well, we're working on that too, but. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we're excluding the, our capital improvements, but um, I guess I can clarify the moratoriums on everything but that particular project at this point. How's that? Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Moving on to pension ordinance number 2019-003, introduction and first reading. We needed to make some changes to our pension board because we're running out of people there's it's a closed system and uh with the retirements we're having we're needing to pull reduce the size of the pension board and bring in some of the retirees as they are a shareholder and have a, a stake in it um we just need to make some of these changes to make that board more efficient right now we have everyone that's everybody, everybody that's still working has to sit on the pension board because to, to follow the ordinance in its entirety so and if somebody's off sick we we some of the meetings have been close to being able to have them so this will make it a little easier for us and give some of the retirees more of a voice yeah i think it's a long time coming it is mm -hmm. so up I'll move that we adopt ordinance number 2019-0034 for introduction and first reading. Support. Any questions on it? Can we waive the second reading? <coughs> no, we still we have to go. No, you have to go. On. We still have time before the next meeting. All right. so. <coughs> oh, yeah, that's right. And it'll take us time to get it all set up anyway. All anyway right. so. yep. Roll call. Commissioner Bryson? Yes. Commissioner Hendrick? Yes. Commissioner Callahan? Yes. Commissioner Clausen? Yes. Commissioner Merchant? Yes. Commissioner Burkhamen? Yes. Mayor Van de Bosch? Yes. Commissioner uh, Now we're going to move on to disbursements, including payroll for $576,839.23. Can I get a motion to approve? I approve the disbursements, including payroll, for the amount of five hundred and seventy-six thousand eight hundred and thirty-nine dollars and twenty-three cents. Support. Any questions or concerns on payroll or on disbursements? Hearing none. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Hendrick. Yes. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Merchant. Yes. Commissioner Burkhamen. Yes. Mayor Vandebosch. Yes. Commissioner Bryson. Yes. Motion carries. Moving on to fund transfer resolution number 02-2019. Can I get a motion uh, to approve? So moved. Support. I would say any questions on it, but I couldn't answer them. Just a transfer. Just a transfer. Yeah. Answer. So, any all uh, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Merchant. Yes. Commissioner Burkhamen. Yes. Mayor Vandenbosch. <coughs> yes. Commissioner Bryson. Yes. Commissioner Hendrick. Yes. Motion carries. And one more fund transfer resolution number 03-2019. So moved. Support. Anybody have any questions on it? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Uh, Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Merchant. Yes. Commissioner Burkhamen. Yes. Mayor Vandenbosch. Yes. 
Commissioner Bryson. Yes. Commissioner Hendrick. Yes. Commissioner Callahan. Yes. Motion carries. Moving on to the city manager report since she's off at a conference today. Is there anything that the illustrious city attorney would like to speak on tonight? <coughs> oh, um. Are we paying for it? <laughs> I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> All right. <Thanks. laughs> well, would the, the assistant uh, city manager like to fill in for her? I actually would like <laughs> to thank everyone who um, came to the first impressions meeting last Thursday. We had a great turnout. And mm -hmm. I think we they found out a lot of good information about um, people that visited Marine City for the first time. So it was a, a good meeting. Um, I want to announce budget workshop meetings coming up in April, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. And finally, I just got notification that East China School District is going out for millage. We've been hearing um, talk about it uh, May 7th. So everybody get out and vote. Yeehaw. Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess we'll move on to Commissioner <coughs> Privilege. Mr. Perkamen, you want to start us out? Sure. Um, I am going to be attending the um, Blue Waterways of St. Clair. It's a local meeting. It's going to be at the library on Wednesday, um, the 20th of February from 3 to 4.30. Um, it's very, I, I feel it's very important to um, support our, our waterways and our, all of our trail systems. We have a lot of, um, you know, launches and kayak launches and things like that. And, um, I know the people that are running the Blue Waterways, and it's um, they do like some some interesting um, kayak events and that kind of stuff. So I'll be attending that. And I also wanted to um, mention we we talked about this at the or it was mentioned in the the fit um, presentation that we are sitting on a really cool trail system, and the trail system is marked as number twenty. I don't know if everybody realizes this, but um, we are in the northern tier. There's three tiers in the United States that go from west to east, east to west. We are on the northern tier. I have been a host of for cross-country bicyclists, not motorcycle people, but bicyclists, <laughs> that um, many of them do the Portland to Portland, Portland, Oregon to Portland, Maine. Um, and we are in a unique uh, situation here because we have the ferry. And the ferry crosses, uh, when you cross the ferry and you get into Canada, you cut off a lot of the, some of the United States, but you can, you can get right to Maine that way. Um, with the ferry being closed, they're being rerouted into um, to Algonac. But I've been hosting cyclists for over 12 years. Um, it's a great organization. It's worldwide. I have had people from all over the world stay with me. Um, they're bicyclists just looking for a place to land for the night. Um, the group is called Warm Showers, and the reason why it's called Warm Showers is because that's what they're looking for, is just a warm shower. You know, they've been cycling all day. You don't know if they've gotten in the headwinds and rain. I have had people come to me at 10 o'clock at night almost in tears. They just made it through, you know, 30 or 50 miles of, of really harsh cycling, and they, they just want to land somewhere. So I usually go, you know, a little bit above and beyond. I provide them a meal and um, laundry facility and that kind of stuff. But if you're interested in hosting, we are in a prime area for hosting, being on the northern tier. Um, you not only see who's coming to you with the website, um, but you can, they, they know you as a host, and you can see them as a guest. I have never had even the slightest inkling of anybody, you know, sketchy come to me. And, you know, I'm a single person living alone, so, or I used to live alone. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a great thing to do. And, and I just want everybody to know that that, that, that that number 20 route goes right past us. And so anytime you see a cyclist that is packed with gear, you know that they're going long distance. And, you know, give them a little wave see if there's anything that you can do for them, you know, especially if you see them on the side of the road. They don't have SAG support. They depend on us, right? So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. I just want to say that uh, I attended the, um, the first impressions meeting also and uh, was very impressed with how it was presented and uh, the information that they gave out. Um, it's interesting to see who was there. Um, of course, 
I was, I, from my side of the, of the coin, I, you know, I noticed that it was mostly everybody that was um, business owners and kind of the main people of Marine City. I didn't see a lot of those, which I was hoping more of the community would be there to see and understand what Marine City has to offer for those who are visiting and how it can benefit us. Um, but in overall, it was a, a, well, a really well done presentation. I was um, encouraged by what they had to say. So that's all I have to say at this moment. Yeah, it was a nice meeting. I just looked around and said, well, good thing we don't have a quorum here. But we did, but we couldn't do anything. So, but. Uh, Thanks for just, pointing that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to be hush hush, but you know. <laughs> we sat at different tables. <laughs> but uh, it, it was a nice thing that they came out and this marijuana thing is, is going the, uh, in different ways and uh, I'm involved with it, like I said, different communities. And I was quite surprised that uh, the article that I read on, on that, that they targeted us for not opting out yet because everybody else in the area had had. So we'll just have to uh, think what we're doing and what the end the best for the community. Um, okay, as a president of the Marine City Area Chamber, I, I, I want to congratulate the city again on being Spotlight Member of the Month. And really one of the reasons why the city received the Spotlight Member of the Month is because of the results of the FIT assessment. Um, you know, that's, uh, we got some really good feedback. Um, actually, we were told in some cases that they've never had such good feedback from the panelists. So um, that's always that's always a very nice thing to hear about your city. We know it's good, we love it here, but you know, I think it's good for, for all of us. It just helps, it's just reassuring. So congratulations again to the city for that. Um, I also want to uh, point out that the chamber now has, we're, we're at our new home down there on Water Street, right across from, uh, um, right across from um, the Riviera. And uh, we have a nice sign out front now and everything, so you can see us there. We're there, we're there, we have office hours, and uh, so you should be able to stop in and get some information if it's needed. If somebody, you see somebody around and they're looking to get some information, you can send them down that way and um, hopefully it's covered and you know they can get the information that they need. Um, <clears throat> and I also want to thank BLB Engraving for, for the sign because they did a great job with it. So. Um, the Lions Wild Game Dinner is Monday night. If you haven't gotten your tickets, there's uh, only a few left. And uh, if you didn't get them, you're going to miss some really, really good vittles there. Um, it's always a lot of good food and a lot of good uh, raffles and prizes. So um, I know last time I checked, there was about eight tickets left. So um, try to make it if you can. But uh, we appreciate all the support for everybody that bought a ticket. And my last question is to you, have you had any more conversations with our garbage hauler, M. Tara? Yes. Have you come up with a? <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm up the food chain now. I'm working directly with uh, Angelo, the president. OK. Because I understand that since we approved it. We've had some issues. Yeah. <laughs> We've had, uh, I have all the complaints. Um, I have the recycling cart issue. But I'm uh, no longer working with uh, the rep who was okay. here. I'm working with uh, the president of the company. OK. Wonderful. They completely skipped me this week, last week, as a food business. Completely skipped. Who? Well, <laughs> That's well last week, didn't they uh, shut everybody down? All the cities were shut down to this. They the picked space. up here, though. But I don't think they do commercial, do they, the Emterra? Yes, they yeah. do. Yeah, Emterra is my company. It's a separate contract, <laughs> right? Yeah, commercial has to contract okay. individually. Right. Right, Which but it's still the same company. Yeah. Anybody need yeah. any? Yeah. Right. Yeah. They shut down for two days last <laughs> week because of the control. Uh, nothing. The yes. Truck's not running. Okay. Thank you. Um, I got another question. I got a question for you. Oh yeah, it's question night. Um, <laughs> there is nothing we can do about the red bags for these uh, these papers. Shopping. The free papers. Again, they're all over town. You can opt out. You can call. I've been plowing them up again. We can opt I plow out. Snow. I mean, we can opt out as a city. Is there a way? Can uh, 
can the chief of police write a littering ticket because it's actually littering? Uh, I know he's gone. He's he gone. snuck oh, out on that one. What do we have to do to opt out? No, I thought we couldn't at one time. There is a procedure to opt out. I mean, you could opt out. The, the problem with the littering is, is when does it become litter? That's uh, when it's in the roadway. Well, because I've seen yeah. them in the road. They're, they're, I've, I've seen them. Yeah. They're not even. Algonac yeah. is done. Um, I think. So. Look at it. St. Clair is done. Yeah. You may it want may, to start the process. It may be on next <laughs> next meeting's yes, agenda. I would. So I just want to bring that up and it's, it's a beautiful community and it looks terrible. It does. Agreed. I just throw it back. So I just didn't know I didn't want to interfere in somebody's freedom of speech to get a BOGO coupon. Um but yeah, I wanted to thank everybody that came out to the fireman's ball. We had hundred and forty fourth and uh the banquet center, the event center, had one of their first big self-catered, and we had some we had some issues, and we worked through them, and uh, they seem to they've learned a lot. We have a wrap-up meeting with them after everybody's rested a little bit, and uh, we're going to help them make some changes so they can be a better have a better host for big events like that because we still had 340 some people at it, so excellent. And we had great attendance and. Everybody was well behaved. That's always nice. <laughs> um, we've got some, again, inclement weather, good and bad coming in. So we had a meeting on flooding issues again with East China. So hopefully we can avert it with warm weather and the ice keeps flowing down, but sometimes it doesn't. So everybody be patient with the uh, spring coming along. So with that, uh, that's all I've got. So. I need a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.